okay so we derived the equation which we call as or everybody calls as uh, the wave equation this is the wave equation the acoustic wave equation and we derived it in terms of um, the particle displacement i am using the word particle now you should completely know what i mean by particle it's not a molecule but it's a small volume as small as possible where continuity of functions are still valid okay so under that assumption of continuum uh, this is the differential equation representing the displacement field which varies both with respect to x and time okay now the point is which i want to make now you could have eliminated xi and you could have written that in terms of pressure also and exactly the same equation you would get okay and in fact the velocity also follows the exact same equation so you can actually write um in terms of um or sorry or that you huh? u is the particle velocity hmm. now if everything follows the same differential equation uh, does it create any confusion that uh, means are they all same thing or means what would be the difference though they represent the same differential equation it it only means that uh, the forms will be exactly the same if you write in um, say for example this if i write so so xi will be the complex xi now we know uh, what is the meaning of complex xi will be say a um and let's say um mm, we are writing for um, x direction motion the positive x direction motion and and because see now you know completely about this kind of equation the their solutions and uh, if um uh, we if we write their solution like this you understand what it means so um, say this is a um plus k x minus ct right so this is the xi field and uh, similarly i can write in fact the pressure field uh, instead of bar okay bar is fine um, so say p plus e is plus k x minus ct and similarly you could write for uh u um in fact shall i write this also pluses because these are it's good to write that uh u plus e raised to plus k x minus ct 
Now, if I write like this, uh, what would be your thought process or what should be your thought process about uh, A plus, P plus and U plus? Yeah. So, are they complex or they are not? Can you try to evaluate A plus in terms of P plus and all? Means, see, uh, all are following the same differential equations means what? All of them have similar shape, obviously. Only thing which will change is there is a phase and there is an amplitude. Shape uh, means, yeah, only shape, not the sizes. So, so now these things will change both or, or decide both. Suppose we consider this to be a real one because we can measure pressure very easily. So assume that this is a real number and then these, uh, these things we can't say whether they will be real or nothing. Uh, we will have to evaluate them and check whether they are coming to be real or complex. Now can you evaluate uh, for example this and uh, tell me what will it be? Or I'll, I'll write the expression, you just try to evaluate it. And uh, from where you can evaluate, I'll just tell you. Um, Okay, uh, what we are trying to correlate, um, xi and this thing, right? Pressure. Uh, pressure. Okay. So, so will that KA also be like that exactly in all three equations? Okay. Uh, uh, what do you think? Uh, why should that be same? Will they be same? Um, yeah, that's a good point, but uh, um, see, uh, why they should be same is uh, the that also, um, if you take a snap, that's the wavelength, right? And now do you think that pressure's wavelength and density's wavelength or for that matter, the displacement's wavelength will be different? Okay, now if, uh, in fact you can derive it, yes, but uh, even without deriving, see uh, if the displacement's profile is like uh, the way here we have written, um, that is for the sinusoidal oscillations, right? These are basically uh, what it means is the real part will give you the actual shape. Now, that means uh, suppose we consider the um, you are having doubt about xi and u, right? Now, u um, is nothing but d xi dt, right? And anywhere when you when you differentiate the sinusoids. It is just like a multiplication of i omega. Yes, only, phase only the phase will change, and and then amplitude also because oh, also is changing depending on the frequency, and but the shape doesn't change because this part again remains the exactly in the same way after differentiation. Just this term um, k c or omega uh, that gets multiplied i omega basically. I have. The eyes I have missed out everywhere. Yeah. Right? Hmm. So that's why the shape of U also will be exactly the same as Xi. 
and uh, what I was talking about is um, yeah let me first write the huh, you're saying something um, some of the expressions which we have already derived I'll just summarize here so that it will be useful for you to so P naught gamma by rho um, then delta is negative of xi by del x then p is nothing but um, uh, minus rho c square del xi over del x uh, that you get because p is also we had derived that p naught gamma naught delta okay and p naught gamma naught okay here i'll write that also p naught gamma naught is rho naught c square so so these are all the expressions which we have derived till now okay and then for sinusoidal um, motion of, of uh, the wave um, because I am emphasizing on the sinusoid thing because see these wave equation does not enforce that they be sinusoids. Any shape can move with constant speed without changing its shape and size right that is what we had derived that that is the um, what? Um, characteristic of this equation that um, whatever this field xi will come out it will move uh, that shape will move at this speed c without changing in shape or size and then to be specific we are saying that if we oscillate that piston uh, which we were talking about sinusoidally then this will be the field which will exist in the forward direction in the positive x direction and then we are uh, summarizing these things and uh, yeah hmm. then i was asking you to figure out a plus in terms of p plus right and use now this equation to find that out because this xi, if you differentiate with respect to x and multiply with rho c, you should get this p. Fine. So do that and you should get the expression that, uh, just a minute, uh, you will get what? Mm, a plus will be equal to minus of p plus um, over i 2 pi f uh, rho c okay and in the same way you can derive u plus to be equal to p plus over rho c and I'll write some other um, things by the time you anything else uh, I want to write one more expression but I haven't derived it um, okay that's fine are you getting these things 
So again, I'll repeat how to get that is differentiate psi with respect to x so that this i k will come and get multiplied. Then this rho c you multiply and that should be equal to this. So that uh, from there you can get a plus. And k is anyway omega over c. So right, k is omega over c. Omega is two pi f. So I'll, I'll write that also. So here this f. So k is omega over c is two pi f over c. So this you should use. Okay. <coughs> Now, what does it tell you? So now you see, you started p plus with a real number, thinking that ki, okay, with respect to that, I will discuss everything else. Pressure wave, I'll consider that to be at t equal to zero, it starts. Then you see this, the displacement is uh, with a phase of 90 degrees. Right. So, so that means it is exactly 90 degree um, apart from the, the pressure. And what about you, the velocity? It is exactly in phase. Okay. Now, um, do you remember um, or have you, I think I had told you to do that, um, that uh, derive the expression for um, the, the average intensity of energy flow. That means the pressure times velocity if you average it out. Okay. Uh, see, this pressure and this velocity if you multiply, what will happen? You will get the power, isn't it? Now, uh, that means it's like energy. So now think in this way. Uh, P, sorry. P times U is like uh, force per area times U, isn't it? Now this is like the power per unit area which is getting transferred. So that means if you multiply them, you will get in a way intensity of the acoustic energy which is flowing through. Right? So watts per meter square sort of thing you will get if you just multiply pressure and but then the point which is very important that the way you always carry out right you do everything calculation and finally you take the real part in this you can't do that because it's a non-linear term you are multiplying pressure with velocity you can't do that in complex number and take the real part and uh, expect that you will get the real energy or intensity of uh, power, you won't get it. For that, always you remember that anywhere, even in electrical thing or in anywhere, uh, when you are representing the sinusoids with complex number, to calculate power, you have to first get the real numbers and then multiply. Otherwise, you will do a mistake, okay? Because it, it's not uh, linear. So here, first you have to get the um, real part and of p the real part of u and then you multiply in fact and then take the average for example um, see uh, if you take say p uh, plus um, say cos omega t minus phi p and similarly u plus cos omega t minus phi u so this thing you can multiply and take the average. So now if you multiply them and take the average, you will actually get the intensity. Okay. And see here, 
so this will be like you know uh, so these terms will come out say p plus u plus they are just amplitudes uh, real numbers come out from the averaging and averaging is over time so over one cycle you are doing so that you can talk about this because see this pressure and uh, you go to a particular location and look at the pressure and velocity they are changing with time so that means if you multiply them the power also ch is changing with time so there is um, no sense of talking about instantaneous power though you can talk about it generally what is done is you average the whole power over a cycle and report that as the power so this is that averaging over a cycle okay then you can see whether actually uh, a power uh, is getting transferred or not okay then if you do that uh, what you will see is this um, this cos a cos b will give you a half cos a plus b by 2 and half cos a minus b by 2 two terms out of which a plus b by 2 will be you know um, like uh, will be just a cos function and over a cycle it will become zero hmm. but a minus b by 2 will be like uh, what um, only 5p minus 5u that will be like cos of um, after averaging one will be a cos term and the other one will be a cos of 5p minus 5u now this will go to 0 on averaging but this will not because this is a constant now but that will come and sit with this right so p plus u plus then cos of 5p minus 5v now this thing actually tells you how much energy is actually getting transferred depending on the phase and when you said that these are in phase the pressure and the velocities are in phase that means this term goes to 1 this term goes to 0 so this is 1 so that means maximum amount of power is getting transferred that means in the plane wave so this is the characteristic of the plane wave where the pressure and the velocities will be in phase and that is why the complete power uh, is, is getting transferred if there are phases so some power will be active and some power will be reactive based on this phase angle between the pressure and the velocity okay so yeah so, so that was about intensity mm. and then why i'm talking about intensity so much is in acoustic these are very important terms intensity because in string um, i intentionally skipped the discussion about uh, intensity of power transfer okay the energy transfer uh, but in acoustic we measure them there are intensity probes through which you can actually measure how much power is getting transferred at a particular location so that's why it's very important that uh, we understand the acoustic intensity that is how much energy per unit time per unit area is passing at a particular point in fact uh, what we hear is this intensity and uh, any idea about uh, uh, means our ears no they are very very dynamic uh, in their range it what i mean is uh, by this is um, we are able to hear over 10 octaves of sound whereas you we can see only i think one octave of light light wise the minimum frequency of light which we see and the maximum frequency of the light which we see they are almost like double the frequency 
one octave, slightly less than that. But in sound, we are able to hear almost like 10 octaves. 10 or 20, if I uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, we are able to hear. And similarly, intensity wise, uh, we are able to hear from means 20 micropascals to 200 pascals, sort of. So, there also the huge range. And that is why um, always they are mentioned in decibels. So, uh, I think time is up for today. So, we will stop here and using the expression which we have derived till now, we will uh, build upon um, the concepts of, we will see first uh, some of the um, units, you know, the sound pressure level, sound intensity level, how to um, quantify them, we will see them and then we will proceed about um, how to um, we discuss what happens when these waves meet other ends, the way we did you know in strings, when it uh, the boundary condition when we put things changed. So same things will happen uh, when we put something on the other side of the tube. Now that is the impedance right, so, so the effect of impedances and all we will start discussing uh, from this point onwards, okay. So we will stop here.